Coming up on today's show, Tesla begins deliveries of its Model S Plaid, and we learn some extra snippets about Tesla's new flagship sedan. The developer of the Keystone XL pipeline calls it quits after having a permit revoked by the US government, and Ford confirms that it's now received more than 100,000 pre-reservations for its F-150 Lightning electric pickup truck. These stories and more coming next. Welcome back to TN Transport Evolved News. I just want to thank you all for being so understanding last week when we were late with the show. And thank you again for your kind words for the loss of our 14 year old Border Collie Pepper after he had two nasty seizures last weekend. He really was a special lad and he's very much missed by both of us and our Labrador right now. This show is sponsored by the Electric Auto Association. Stick around until the end of the show to find out how joining the EAA can help you finance your own clean energy or transportation purchase. We begin today with the official start of deliveries of the Tesla Model S Plaid, Tesla's most powerful, most expensive, and most impressive Model S to date. It might look pretty similar on the outside to the original Tesla Model S, but the Model S Plaid is all new inside and out. Aside from the new interior with landscaped center screens front and rear, yoke style wheel, and completely stalkless controls, the motors powering the Model S Plaid have some remarkable power delivery specs, peaking out at over 1,000 combined horsepower, 745 kilowatts, and keeping the power delivery all the way up to the car's maximum top speed, where legal, of 200 miles per hour. 321 kilometers per hour. It truly is an impressive vehicle with improved cooling to ensure more consistent performance than previous variants. Although Tesla warns you'll need new tires to hit that top speed. I cannot wait to see it go head to head on the track with rival brands. Jaguar has officially announced that its 2022 Jaguar I-Pace electric crossover is now available to buy, with the same promised upgrades that the 2021 model year I-Pace was meant to have, but didn't have because of COVID. Improvements include a brand new infotainment system with better navigation, enhanced over-the-air software functionality, and new standard fit driver assistance systems with 3D surround cameras and digital rear view mirrors. More importantly, the new iPace, which starts at just under 70,000 US dollars or equivalent, features an 11 kilowatt onboard charger upgrade, but its DC quick charging rate is still limited to 100 kilowatts. There's something that's a little disappointing given its sticker price. Battery pack capacity, 90 kilowatt hours nominal, should give the same EPA range as its predecessor. That's 234 miles or 376 kilometers. We've been eagerly awaiting news of which automaker or startup would gain permission to operate fully autonomous, driver-free passenger services in the state of California. And to be honest, we'd expected the honor to go to Waymo. But this week, the California Public Utilities Commission confirmed that General Motors Cruise has pipped Waymo to the post, earning official approval to operate a public autonomous vehicle service in the state. While it is technically a pilot program permit at the moment, it means that we could see members of the public ride in Cruise's autonomous cars for the first time. Interestingly, the permit prohibits Cruise from operating at airports, unless it gets extra permission to, or offer round-trip sightseeing tours, and it cannot accept monetary compensation for any transportation provided. A few weeks ago, we told you that several major oil companies had been dealt a massive blow after losing key votes, being forced to clean up their act, and in the case of Exxon, finding that some of their new board members were actually climate activists. This week, Big Oil got a new blow after the company behind the Keystone XL pipeline announced it was giving up on the project. The reason? Permits previously given to it for the project were rescinded by the Biden administration, leaving the project no viable way of successfully completing. This is most certainly a victory for those of who campaigned against its construction, and is also a victory for those seeking a cleaner, greener future. But I still hope that those workers who will lose their jobs now can find a new clean energy job under future Biden administration plans to transition the US to renewable energy. We all know Tesla has been using select customers to help it beta test its full self-driving functionality. But what you might not know is that the company has also been operating a fleet of in-house beta testing cars, supervised by specially trained staff. 
To date, that fleet has operated in select US states, but this week, the eagle-eyed folks at Electric noted that Tesla has now expanded its job postings for similar options around the country, and in fact, around the world. Since every country has slightly different regulations concerning autonomous vehicle and semi-autonomous vehicle operations, this makes total sense, and I'm guessing the new hires will help ready FSD for the regulators. So if you're in the market for a job and you'd like to be on the inside with FSD, maybe it's now time to brush off your resume. It was back in December last year when California startup Aptera came, Phoenix-like, out of the ashes of the company that had borne its name more than a decade ago. And when it did, it showed the world a leaner, more efficient, more capable take on the original Aptera 2E design. Since then, it's kept fans and reservation holders, including myself, up to date with its progress. And back in April, I was among the first to get an official ride along in the company's first alpha prototype for the reborn Aptera, a vehicle Aptera called Noir. This week, it published a new video showcasing the second alpha prototype, nicknamed Sol, going for an outing to the beach. We saw its tent accessory for the first time and saw some sneak peeks at what the final in-car infotainment system might look like. However, it is pretty obvious from the video that it's still a very long way from production and the screens are still mock-ups. For the last year, we have been watching as Lordstown Motors drip-fed us information about its first electric pickup, the Lordstown Endurance. We've been expressing some concerns about the company's future for some time, and have even wondered out loud on this show if it would meet its promise of having series production vehicles rolling off dealer lots this year. In last week's show, we told you that things were looking bleak, with the company CEO stating more funds would be needed to bring the endurance to market. And this week, that evaluation has gotten markedly worse, with the company basically stating in an amended annual report to the SEC that in one year, it may no longer function as a going concern. It has now categorically said it doesn't have the money to bring the endurance to market, and its share price has tanked. Making vehicles is hard, and I'm seriously doubting Lordstown will make it. Just a month ago, Ford unveiled its F-150 Lightning pickup truck, and in that time we've seen Ford's pre-reservation numbers for its first full-size electric pickup tick up. And while Ford's pre-reservation numbers aren't anywhere near as large as the Tesla Cybertruck after a similar period of time, this week Ford did confirm it's now hit 100,000 pre-orders. Of course, pre-orders don't always translate into confirmed orders, but it does show that a serious number of people have plopped down $100 to get a chance to get in line to buy one, including me. The money Ford has amassed from this $10 million should help it secure some serious battery supplies for initial production, and it hopefully will help it accelerate the battery facility it's currently working with SKI on to build. Watch this space. And now it's time for Short Shorts. The Boring Company in Las Vegas has passed its official capacity tests, moving 4,400 people per hour along a roughly mile-long underground route using Tesla vehicles. The Danish Defence Ministry has begun a two-year trial using an electric airplane as a flight trainer while it evaluates the technology. UK parcel delivery firm DPD has ordered 750 new Maxxis e-delivery electric vans, which will bring the company's total electric vehicle fleet to 1,500 vans by the end of the year. Over 450 investors, representing more than $41 trillion in assets, have signed a joint letter calling on world leaders to take aggressive action to mitigate the effects of anthropogenic climate change. A new Pew Research survey finds that nearly one half of all EVs sold worldwide are in China, with Europe coming in second place and the US a distant third. But adoption of plug-in vehicles in America is quickly trending upwards, with 39% of US car buyers saying that they would consider a new EV for their next purchase. The Vatican has committed to shifting its vehicle fleet to EVs, and for Earth Day, Nissan helped out by gifting a Nissan Leaf to the Holy See. Thailand is a global manufacturing powerhouse, and now we can add electric vehicles to the country's output. Chinese automaker Great Wall Motors has opened an EV factory in Thailand, and Foxconn, which is working to develop an EV platform, is looking to do the same. 
in a long overdue move, automaker General Motors has finally joined other manufacturers in supporting California's emission reduction targets. Though GM is also asking the Biden administration to be more flexible in how emissions reduction goals are to be met. With plans to replace one half of its Caledonia Depot bus fleet in Glasgow with battery electric vehicles, First Bus's charging hub will be the largest in the entire UK. For now. Add Peugeot to the list of car brands now under the Stellantis umbrella that are facing serious legal issues due to diesel gate style emissions cheating. The charges from Peugeot come from the same investigation that has already led to charges against both Fiat and Citroen. Northvolt has secured an additional $2.75 billion of funding, which will allow the battery developer to expand its Swedish Gigafactory from 40 gigawatts of yearly battery output to 60 gigawatt hours. Mantrucks has opened its e-mobility centre in Munich, Germany, as the company prepares for eventual scaling of its electric industrial trucks up to series production. Electrification is coming to MotoGP, just not the track. Motorcycle Racing's governing body, the FIM, is partnering with Cake, whose also utility bikes will replace the piston-powered scooters that have been used by the hundreds of support staff who make everything happen on race day. Warbox, which provides a variety of electric vehicle charging infrastructure products, is going to be going public in a reverse merger with the special purpose acquisition company Kensington Capital Partners. Electrify America has released a new generation of its app-connected home EVSE, the Home Station 2. With faster charging speeds and a $650 price tag, it's an appealing option. Battery supplier LG Energy Solutions, which builds batteries for Tesla and GM, among other automakers, has applied for approval for its initial public offering. If plans go ahead, it could be the largest IPO in the history of the South Korean business. Motoring charity Mission Motorsport and EV tyre developer Enzo have set a brand new hypermiling record. The 9.14 miles per kilowatt hour record was set in a first generation Renault Zoe traveling at about 19 miles per hour, over 475 miles on one single charge. Tesla's new Model S Plaid received a $10,000 price increase on the very same day as its official delivery event. The good news though, is that the cost of the much cheaper Model S Long Range wasn't affected. Aptera has begun soliciting investment from the public with an initial share price of $3.80 and a minimum $1,000 commitment. And just as a reminder, while I am a pre-reservation holder for an Aptera, nobody at this company is allowed to invest in any companies or industries that we cover. Zero Motorcycles is bringing back its Cash for Carbon Incentive program, which offers a $1,500 discount on the price of select models if you bring in a petrol-powered motorcycle to trade. The program ends on July 6th. CNBC has reported that Tesla is bringing test vehicles to India, as some sources say the company is making preparations to begin selling its cars in the Indian automotive market. The Samsung SDI is now producing its fifth generation EV batteries, which have a nickel, cobalt and aluminium oxide cathode designed for lower cost and higher energy density. The new NCA batteries are available in both cylindrical and prismatic variants. Dei Motor has unveiled the E. Odin electric motorcycle. It has a claimed 130 miles of range and a top speed of 62 miles per hour. It's quite a looker too. Do I see a hint of BMW influence in those headlights? And those are your short shorts. There will be more next week. I don't know about you, but I've been eagerly watching the aviation world slowly test electric airplanes, both traditional passenger carrying craft and more advanced vertical takeoff and landing craft, for some time. To date, most electric airline programs are focused on collaboration with smaller companies. But this week we heard that Bristol, UK-based Vertical Aerospace has partnered with Virgin Atlantic to pioneer short-haul zero-emission air travel. The goal of the project is to help Virgin Atlantic offer customers electric connecting air travel services for the last or first 100 miles of their trip. Using the 100-mile capable VAX4 from Vertical Aerospace, Virgin believes it can help cut emissions of customers travelling to major UK airports and also drastically reduce congestion by not making customers sit in traffic for hours on end just to get to their flight on time. And finally, 
The 2022 GMC Hummer EV is big, burly and powerful, with lots of onboard technology, the ability to climb over massive rocks and an eye-watering price tag, even in its entry-level format. But if you're someone interested in owning a Hummer EV who doesn't have the 100 plus grand that you'd need to buy one direct from the company, can I perhaps interest you in a fully functioning replica that you could build yourself from Lego? Enter this beautiful replica made from scratch out of Lego Technics by Lego Ideas contributor Technic Al. With three-way steering, yes, including crab mode and all-wheel drive, as well as extract mode, this piece of art blows us away. You have 500 and some days to vote for it to become an official LEGO kit, and you can follow the link below in the show notes to show your appreciation. And on that note, we are done for the day. But before I go, I would like to thank the Electric Auto Association for sponsoring today's show. They have been advocating for electric vehicles since 1967, and they firmly believe that our future depends on us making the switch to clean green electric cars today. The EAA can help you find someone near to you that can help you make your own switch to electric. It can help you become an EV educator, and it can point you in the direction of monthly meetups for like-minded EV fans. And if you become a member, you'll get access to a new clean energy and EV loan program set up between the EAA and the Colorado Clean Energy Credit Union. You can find out more by heading to electricauto.org. As I'm sure you probably know, we have recently spun off our shorts content onto a new channel called Transport Evolved Shorts. So please, if you're not already, subscribe. And don't forget to subscribe to both this channel and our Transport Evolved Take Two channel as well. And so you don't miss out on content, make sure you ping the bell for all of them. If you'd like to help us continue to grow, please become a patron. You can send us Kofi or head to our Red Bubble store. Every penny helps and we're able to do so much more now than we were a few years ago. So thank you. And if you are heading to Redbubble, please check out our special Pride designs. We are donating 100% of any profits from our Pride range during the month of June to the Trevor Project. So let your flag fly. We even have a Pride coloured tee logo that is perfect for allies. I will be back next week, but until then, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Congratulations to my daughter who is graduating from high school today. And as always, keep evolving.